So now I'm getting back to the question we started last week. Uh, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open to 1 Corinthians 14. Last week, I kind of introduced this, this topic. The question is, can you explain 1 Corinthians 14, uh, verses 35 and 36? Um, in as much as anyone can explain it, I would say yes, I can. Keeping in mind that this is one of those passages that people have strong feelings about one way or the other. Uh, let's just read the passage. Um, the women should keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission, as the law also says. If there is anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. How does that sit in our culture today? <laughs> Does it? Yeah, ask my wife. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, this is one of the things that early on in our marriage we had to address. Uh, I shared last week that, you know, after we had finished in Bible school and we knew everything that anybody needs to know about being an effective minister of the word, that's sarcasm. Um, God took us to a place where we essentially had to look at everything we believed and hold it up in light of Scripture to see what the Scripture said about it. And it, it changed a lot of our theology. Um, anybody here like to do puzzles? Okay. I like to do puzzles. I love doing puzzles. So long as they're about 10 pieces. <laughs> That's not true. Um, I like to do puzzles. I don't like to look at the picture of what the puzzle is while I'm doing it. Okay? Because I look at a piece and my brain says, this must go here. Okay? Uh, I've been working through a set of puzzles on my iPad um, from December. There are a lot of Chris Christmas ones. Actually, the one that I'm working on right now is kind of creepy. It's a whole bunch of, of uh, nutcrackers, and those things creep me out. <laughs> With a big old grin on their face like they know something about you. Um, and this whole, it's just a bunch of nutcrackers. And, and uh, I got to a place, there was one part on the puzzle let me rephrase. There were several pieces of the puzzle that looked like they were together. It was a metallic blue. Okay, and I'm thinking, you know, there's only about seven pieces of metallic blue, so they must all go together. No, they didn't. No, because the goofy designer of the puzzle, there were actually three or four little spots of metallic blue, and they were scattered all over the puzzle. And, and what happens when I take my presupposed idea of where this puzzle piece is supposed to go, what happens to the puzzle? I like to do what Bugs Bunny did. He just picked up the piece and recut it and stuck it where he wanted it. <laughs> but what happens to the picture then? Doesn't look anything like what it was supposed to. Okay? Now, everybody in here, when you read the word, Read it one of two ways. You either read it uh, and study in the manner of eisegesis or exegesis. Okay? That's, I, I pay thousands of dollars to learn those words. I'm giving it to you for free. Okay? Um, exegesis and eisegesis, they're Greek words. Um, eisegesis means to lead into. Okay. 
exegesis is to lead out of. Okay? When you read the Word, and every one of us does it, okay, we read into it with a set of preconceived ideas. Okay? We, we read into it with what our culture, our learning, who we are, and, and then we take this and we, we filter all of that onto the Word. That's eisegesis. We read into the Word what our experience and our wisdom tells us. Okay? Now, what happens when you do that? Uh, you know, in science, they actually call this uh, inductive and deductive reasoning. Can anybody explain what the difference is between inductive and deductive reasoning? Okay, here we go. Inductive reasoning is this. Okay, I see a cat, and the cat is black. Therefore, all cats are black. Okay? Now, that's inductive. Deductive is I look at as many cats as I can find and say that cats are of different colors. Okay? Do you see the difference between that? Now, when we read the word and we read it eisegetically, we read it with our own experience and our own wisdom, what happens to the word? Well, remember that puzzle piece? Our, our picture ends up being skewed. It ends up being um, like Frankenstein, a piece of this and a piece of that, and we put it all together and sell it in Hollywood for millions of dollars. Um, exegesis is what I want to do here, because I don't want to read my opinion into this. I don't want to read what um, society or culture or my wife tells me. I want to see it for what it says. It's a lot of work, okay? Because sometimes we look at something, I mean, when, when I read this, um, women should keep silent in the church for they are not permitted to speak. It is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Um, you know, I grew up, uh, my mom was an ordained minister. And this was one of the first things that God took Christy and I through. Okay? Now, if it were appropriate, it would be much more effective for Christy to be up here telling you what we learned. Okay? Because uh, her senior thesis was why women should be able to do everything that men do in the church. Okay? And a matter of, what, about three years later, four years later, we had to re-examine that. Okay? Here's this in a nutshell. All scripture is interpreted in light of all scripture. Okay? That means we must read the passage in context for what is before and what is after it. We must put it into the context of the whole of the sum of Scripture. Okay? That's, people get off on some really weird things because of one passage. All right? So, what does the rest of the Bible have to say about women talking? <clears throat> you know, it's really funny. Um, the sins that afflict men versus the sins that afflict women. Because we're designed differently. We are constructed for different purposes. Uh, I, I really regret today that women want to be everything that men are. You really don't want to set your goals that low. <laughs> you can do better. You really can because, see, God designed us each with intent and with purpose. And he designed us to work cooperatively. Okay? Now, sin came in. We looked at the passage in uh, Genesis 3 several weeks back. And what work what was supposed to mesh and fit all of a sudden didn't. Okay? 
And we looked at Genesis 3, the curse that God gave to the woman is that your desire will be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Now, the first part of that we addressed when we talked about women, we talked about wives in the family affair. The second part of that we're gonna talk about hopefully next week uh, when we talk to husbands. But what worked like this, what was designed to work like this, now works like this. And if you're lucky, you wear it down enough that it works somewhat, okay? So, what does the Bible have to say about women speaking? Uh, last week, I asked you to turn to 1 Corinthians 11, and then somebody changed the clock and our time ran away. So, go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, my belief, okay, my understanding of what 1 Corinthians is, is Paul is starting here, and he's talking about how the church should function. And he carries this all the way through several chapters later, but Paul is the king of parenthetical statements. Okay? Have you ever met someone that cannot tell you a story without telling six stories in between? Because everything, that's me. Okay, when, when Christy uh, and I talk, uh, first thing of the day typically is, uh, how'd you sleep? I ask her and most of the time she says, good. She asks me and uh, most of the time it's like, eh, you yeah. know. And, and then the next question is, did you have any dreams? Uh, Christy doesn't dream a lot, or at least she doesn't remember a lot of dreams. I dream all night through, that's probably why I don't sleep as much. I don't like them, okay? I have some <coughs> dreams that are just weird, all right? So, um, we are looking at how this, this uh, oh, the dreams. When Christy asked me if I have a dream, my dreams are very stark, they're very vivid, uh, and most of them I can recall with a lot of detail. Even years later, I can. Um, but when I tell her the dream, I can't just tell her the story. I, I have to fit it in the context of my dream. Now, if you ever try to explain to someone the bizarreness of your dream, you try and make it understandable to them, just give up, okay? They, they're not supposed to make sense. Anybody that's read Alice in Wonderland knows that guy had an active, uh, either an active dream life or he was on drugs, okay? Because a lot of my dreams makes me wonder what she slept me before I went to bed, okay? Wake up going, that was just weird. Um, so, Paul is the king of parenthetical statements, okay? He segues a lot. He, he starts on a topic, and he starts working, and he goes, oh yeah, that reminds me. Whoop. While we're here, let's talk about this. Oh, and that reminds me. Whoop. And then, like four chapters later, you're going, hey, what happened to the first one? And then he comes, whoop, right back up to the top, and, and he picks up. So what I think is going on here is Paul is trying to explain to and remind the Corinthian church how orderly service is supposed to be. What is the church supposed to look like? Not the building, okay, but the people. And so in chapter 11, he's actually talking about head coverings. Um, I want to skip down. Uh, I encourage you to read this passage, just like I encourage you to read every passage. Uh, I'm just going to read one verse out of this. Actually, I'll read two. Uh, down in verse 4, Paul writes, Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. But every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, since it is uh, the same as if her head were shaven. And then he goes on to explain, uh, For if a wife will not, cut will not cover her head, that she should cut her hair short. But since it is disgraceful for a woman to cut off her hair or shave her head, let her cover her head. Okay, a, a lot of that is not germane to what we're talking about. Okay, um, one, there, there are two things that really chap me about the study of 1 Corinthians in, in America today. The first one is people start making excuses for uncomfortable scriptures. Scripture doesn't need your excuse. It's the written word of the living God. Okay? It is supposed to be sharp. It is supposed to be sharp. It's supposed to cut. 
It's supposed to be there to cut away what is not of God. Okay? Don't make excuses for it. You know, don't apologize for it. Why in the world would you apologize for God's word to anyone? Okay? The other thing that, that really chaps me is in the process of apologizing or excusing God's word, we start putting things into the word that aren't there. Okay? Okay? Now, 1 Corinthians was written to who? The Corinthians, yeah! That's why it was called Corinthians. Not the 1 Corinthians, it was to the first church, because there weren't like 1st and 2nd. There were just Corinthians. But um, as such, why do we adhere to any of it? I've never been to Corinth. As near as I can tell in my family line, we're not from Greece. We're, we're, that's any of you guys from Greece? Anybody from Corinth? So why in the world would we pay attention to this this book? What's that? It's God's word. God's intent, God's plan, God's design was that this would go beyond the particular people it was written to. Uh, do you know that when you read the pastoral epistles, you're reading a private letter from Paul to Timothy and Paul to Titus? Um, why is that in Scripture? Why does Paul's personal note of encouragement and exhortation to a, a, an up-and-coming pastor, why is that in the gospel? Why? Because God put it there. Okay? So, um, in chapter 11, verse 5, I want to point out one thing about that passage that we read. Um, what is he talking about here? What's he talking about? Church yeah, but I mean, look, look specific to this passage. <coughs> is, is Paul really dicing up hair and not hair? That's, that's only the example that he's using. Look at verse 5. What does he tell, what does he say of the women? Okay, it says, But every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. It is the same as if her head were shaven. What is the focus here? Is it her hair? Is it her covering? It, it's what she's doing. Praying and prophesying. Praying and prophesying both involve what? Speaking. Words. Words. Just so you know, all you women, you have like ten times the number of words that men have. Most of them we don't get. Okay? To this day, I, I do not believe that there's an actual color taupe. <laughs> I think that's what Christy tells me when she doesn't know what it is. It's taupe. Okay? She points it out to me and I go, oh, that's tan. Oh, that's gray. Those two didn't look anything alike. Okay? So, God has blessed women... And sin has tainted women in the use, the prolific use of words, of language. Okay. Men, typically, our conversations are very short. They're direct, they're to the point. Okay. Um, women use a lot more words to accomplish the same purpose. Why? Because women are emotive speakers. Their, their words are connected to emotion. Okay? Most guys, if a word is connected to emotion, we probably better not say that word. <laughs> right? Right? Okay? But, but you see what Paul is saying here? By inference, he is saying that women should be praying and prophesying. That, that is an avenue that is open to them. Well, how does this compare if we go back to 1 Corinthians 14 and it says women should be silent in the church? Hmm. Okay, hold these, these two things up in light of the word. It almost looks like they're very far apart, doesn't it? Because, well, the, well, women can, can pray and prophesy 
uh, but they're not to speak in the church. How does that work? Here's what I believe it is. Now, in 1 Corinthians 11, Paul is dealing with covering. Okay? He's dealing with covering. Um, if we back up um, just a couple verses, uh, verse 3 in chapter 11, Paul says, I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Now, we see a hierarchy set up here. God the Father, Jesus the Son, men, women. Now, can I just ask you plainly, do you prefer the Father or the Son? Exactly. They're, they're the same. They are two parts of one thing. Okay. Um, does it bother anyone, male or female, does it bother you to submit yourself to the Father? Well, sometimes it does me, because he asks me to do really goofy things sometimes, things that don't make sense to me. Okay? Uh, we were going through the grocery store some years back, and uh, my job is to push the buggy. And to see how much I can sneak in there without Christy C. <laughs> uh, she's been on to me, though. She's been going to the grocery store without me. Um, we were going to the grocery store, and, and uh, there was a, an employee at the store, and she was, uh, I, I don't know, she was wearing an awful lot of makeup. I, I would guess she was maybe 16. She could have been 30. I don't know. I don't do um, ages real well on people. Um, and as we passed by her going down the aisle I felt God prompt me that I should tell her that God loved her and that she was beautiful okay that's pretty heavy stuff when you're looking at canned products <laughs> <laughs> And I, I kind of kind of bleeped out of it for a minute, and, and we went a couple aisles, aisles over, and here she come down the aisle, and I felt like God prompted me again. You need to tell her that I love her and that she's beautiful. Oh, she's gone. God, she went around the corner. <laughs> and so I was, was uh, praying and, and trying to reason with God why Christy would be a much better person to tell this lady this and um, we got over to the other side of the store and and as typical Christy said oh we forgot to get this now she's the keeper of the list I don't have the list okay my job is to push the cart <laughs> my job is not to take, take care of the list so we get over on the other side and she says oh I forgot to get this can you go back it was on the canned goods item uh, row and so I walked down there, I'll get it, you stay with the cart and buy baguettes or whatever you're doing. And uh, I walked back and I turned the corner and guess who was standing down there, right in front of the cans that I needed to get. Okay, sometimes I'm a little slow on the uptake. Okay, but that was pretty obvious to me. And so I walked up and uh, she kind of glanced at me and, and scooted out of the way. and. I picked up the can and I know she probably thought I was some kind of weirdo because I stood there for what felt like an eternity with my head on the <laughs> arguing with God. <laughs> and so I told her, God wants you to know that he loves you and that you are beautiful. And then I took my can and ran. <laughs> <clears throat> I never saw that girl after that. Okay? I have no idea what happened to her. No clue. Um, honestly, I don't even know if I got the right can. <laughs> but God kept putting things in front of me. Okay? Um, when we look at this word and we see two things that appear to be irreconcilable, um, Men, I, I want specifically the men, does it bother you to be under the headship of Jesus Christ? No. 
Sometimes it's hard, yeah, like when he asks you to go to the canned good items. <laughs> Does it bother you to be under the headship of Jesus Christ? Does it bother you to be under the headship of God the Father? No. Why? Okay. What about when he asks you to do awkward things? You know, that my story was uncomfortable. He asked my brother to get out in the middle of backed up traffic on, uh, I no, 610 in Houston in the middle of rush hour and dance. He didn't ask me to do it. This boy don't dance. I don't. Um, and my brother got out and danced. And he said people looked at him, and he said he had to close his eyes because much as I don't dance, he don't dance worse. <laughs> God has not gifted us. We've got two left feet. All, all four of them are left feet between us. Um, but he did what God said. Now, why? why? I don't know. I don't know why God wanted me to do it. I mean, I can, I can rationalize things, but, you know, Christy is a whole lot better at those things than I am. She has excess words that she can use. I'm limited. Okay. That, was, that was like, that was seven words off of my, my daily quota. Okay. I am under the authority of Jesus Christ. And even when he asks me to do things that I disagree with, I don't like, I don't want, I know in the deepest part of my being that it is because his will for me is best. Okay. Now, women, speak honestly. Okay. Does it bother you to be under the authority of your husband? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I bet you you guys are a lot louder when you're telling your husband. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why? Because I'm afraid he's going to do something that affects me adversely and I'll be helpless to do anything to defend myself. Hmm. All right, men. We just heard that we're not perfect that the women are afraid that we'll ask them to do something that will adversely affect them, and they're not really sure what we're going to do. I've got a word, uh, word of wisdom for you women. Most of the time, right up to the moment, we're not sure what we're going to do. <laughs> okay? Here, here's the deal. As far as speaking in the church, I believe that the scripture says there are two occasions when it is permissible for a woman to speak in the church, and that is when she is praying, and that is when she is prophesying now. Uh, praying, who is she talking to? God. God. Prophesying, who is she speaking on behalf of? God. God. See, the, the focus is not on the women at all. It should never be on the women. Quite honestly, it should never be on the men. It should be on God. Our purpose when we come together is to hold him up high. That we would be invisible as ourselves. I want, when people look at me, all I want them to see is Jesus. Okay? I want whatever God wants. You know, um, I still get sick to my stomach every every Sunday before I come up here. Um, I still desperately pray, God, just one more song. God, they've only been singing for like eight minutes. God's plan is so much better than ours. And sometimes it's hard, and sometimes we don't understand. Um, sometimes I think we choose not to understand so we can be offended, uh, so we can be put out. But the order of covering, God the Father looked after and cared for Jesus. He asked him to do one of the hardest things that I've ever seen any father ask a son to do. Okay? But Jesus scorned the shame of the cross. Okay? He went to it because his father had promised something better on the other side. His God had promised a good result. When I am asked to do things, um, I know you guys don't believe me, um, I never talked very much growing up. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was a time when my parents uh, had me go to a, a counselor 
because they were concerned that because I didn't talk. Um, of the, the five kids in my family, four of them are prolific talkers and, and can carry on all the conversation all by themselves. Okay? Uh, my family is gregarious, my family is loud, my family is physical. You know, we're huggers. We've always been huggers. Okay? Sometimes you weren't sure if they were coming in for a hug or a tackle. Okay? But I didn't, I didn't talk. But I knew that God called me to be a pastor. My mom never let me forget that. I was five or six years old. I had plans for my life. I had things I was going to do. I had places I was going to go. And, and all of that, God said, no, that's, that's not my plan for you. That's not what I want for you. Okay? One of the reasons that I think God asked me to be pastor is because I am so desperately dependent on him. Anything this job requires of me, anything that this ministry would call me out to. Okay? Um, yeah, I get to that point where I, I say, like Paul, I will glory all the more in my weakness that his strength might be revealed in me. Um, can women talk? Yeah, they can talk. They talk to God or on behalf of God. Okay? Also, keep something in mind, folks. We don't have church anything like they had in Corinthians. Anything like they had in Ephesus, anything like that in Colossae, it was a, an entirely different beast. Now, that does not give us the excuse to say we just throw this thing out on its ear. Because, see, that's one of the things that we do. Our culture tells us that's not acceptable, so we hush hush it, we put it under the rug. Okay? Um, we still have to deal with it. I don't ever want to be a pastor that doesn't deal with the hard topics. And this is a hard topic. Okay, because this goes against everything that our culture tells us. Everything. Okay? Uh, what was that commercial back in the day? I can bring home the bacon, fry it up. I see some of your mouths moving already. What is it? I can bring home the bacon. Fry it. And never let me forget you're a man. Never, never let you forget you're a man. Um, I don't even know what that commercial was for. Um, but this, this I believe with all my heart. Women, don't desire to be men. Don't, don't desire to be men. Desire to be what God wants you to be. God did not call you to be a man. He called you to be a complementary to man. That man would, would mesh. That things would work together. Okay? Give up a little of this. Men, come next week with padding for your bottom because we're going to get our butts kicked, okay? Because we, we are part of that curse too, okay? That contention, that struggle, that, that who's going to lead, who's going to follow, how is this going to work? What's the, what's the dynamic of this? So, can women speak? I believe in, in the church. Um, when we are in worship together, worship is not just the music, which thank you, worship team, this morning worship was wonderful. Um, honestly, I have no idea what you guys look like, but man, I was, I was enjoying time with God. Um, worship is also receiving the teaching, hearing the word, and, and ministering on behalf of. So... Um, Women, you've been given a very, very vital commission that when you use your words, that it is either on behalf of people to God or on behalf of God to the people. Okay? And that's not something you want to play around with. Okay? Um, you look at the, the people that spoke as if it were the words of God and ascribed it to God, and it wasn't from God, that's a very dangerous place to be. Okay? So.